Hey, Cave fans, welcome back inside the KFC Yum Center. I'm Matt Tate, and I'm joined by Benton Smith. God, it's good to be with you. Wow, I feel like I'm just with you everywhere I go these days. You are. It's like I went to Des Moines last week, and you were there. Right. I don't, I don't get it. I was at Kansas City the weekend before that. You were there. Hanging out. Yeah. I feel like I saw you in my hotel room at some point. You were there. Oh, you were there. Geez. A lot of work. It's a little done. much. Yeah, <laughs> I'll give you that. That's fair. <laughs> Too much for anybody to handle. Just like Kansas has been for every team that they've yeah, played, no rolled over Austin P, rolled over UConn, and rolled over Maryland in the second half yeah. to get to the Elite Eight where they will play Villanova, the two seed in the South Regional, around 7.50 Central Time Saturday night, right on this court behind us. And Benton, we spent the day with Villanova and Kansas. Uh, the, the longer this tournament goes, the more access you get to these guys, not necessarily right. in terms of time, but they broke out the five starters for each team today. You get a little more one-on-one -on -one time with them. It's not just everybody converging on a tiny locker room and trying to make it happen. So I think I learned a lot about both teams today. And, yeah. and obviously we already know a ton about Kansas, but I think as this goes on, you even learn more about them. What did you learn today about Villanova, about this matchup that, that has you kind of uh, intrigued or fired up or whatever the case is? Well, I, I think probably the my biggest takeaway from today was that Villanova kind of has its its own Perry Ellis and Chris Jenkins, it seems like. Definitely. Uh, that comparison was coming from all over the place today. Coaches, um, right, yeah, right. From players, both sides, exactly. uh, KU and Villanova. And basically, I would say the only difference between Ellis and Jenkins as far as like what they bring is that Jenkins is, uh, it's, he's kind of like if Perry Ellis was truly unleashed as a three-point shooter. Sure, sure. You know, he's kind of reined in, and I mean, obviously he can hit three-pointers, but that's, he can do so much inside or Driving operating the rim, off right. the baseline that they don't, KU doesn't really need to rely on him to do that, also because they have three-point shooters that are yeah. playing guard and more than capable of yeah. providing that kind of spark, but it sounds like Jenkins is, is just kind of like a a true stretch four, which is becoming kind of a more common thing in basketball these days. There's no doubt. I mean, he's he's going to be a that'll be an awesome matchup to yeah. watch those two. Uh, how much time they spend guarding each other, nobody knows yet, but probably quite a bit. And, and I think obviously the guard matchup is really good here. Uh, the, the KU's guards, you know, but Josh Hart's very good. The the Archie kid that they call <laughs> Arch, uh, you know, who hit the big shot a couple of years ago to beat mm -hmm. Kansas. Such a tough competitor. That matchup with him and Frank Mason should be a lot of fun. And yeah. I'll tell you what, the, that's the thing I learned the most. These teams are very similar. Yeah. Veteran teams, tough teams. They play tough defense. They can shoot the ball well from the outside. They're scrappy. They fought hard and kind of rolled over teams to get here. Uh, it, it's impressive to watch that this is what it's come down to. The winner goes to the Final Four. The loser goes home. It's it's really too bad that either team has to lose because they're both Final Four caliber teams, I think. Yeah, I mean, this is what you want in an Elite right. Eight matchup. Right. You don't always get that. Sometimes it's a one or two seed versus a, a lower seed that, you know, pulled off some upsets along the way. Yeah. I mean, this this is what you want, one versus two. It's, it's going to be great to great to watch. And uh, we talked about this a, a little bit last night, just like you could really see just how locked in Villanova is. Yeah. And they just kind of carry themselves as like, we're supposed to be here. Right. We're a Final Four caliber team. Right. We're here to handle business. I mean, it's very similar to KU in the way they approach things. For sure. Villanova number one ranked for a lot of the season. Mm -hmm. um, lost to Seton Hall late in the Big East tournament right. final that, that probably cost them a one seed, really. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a phenomenal matchup. It's, it's two titans, at yeah. least this season, really, really getting after it. And I'll tell you what, the three point shooting, I think, will be so key. Mm -hmm in this game. Uh, Villanova is shooting 53% in this tournament. It, it's amazing yeah. how many they've made. They hit 10 of 15 the other night against Miami. Uh, KU shooting very well too. Uh, it's incredible how well both of these teams have shot from the outside. And I think that will be one of the biggest keys. If Kansas can slow Villanova down the way they did mm -hmm. UConn, the way they did Maryland, um, th then I think Kansas has a great chance to, to move on, and, and there's no reason to think that they can't. KU has played very, very solid defense the, the last two months, really, um, and, and certainly in this tournament as well. Uh, I, I think that that's, you know, that KU, I think, gives up about 32% shooting three-point range, and, and Villanova gives up almost 34%. So if you play the averages, and that's built over 37 games, not just one game, you know, the advantage there goes Kansas's three-point defense just a little bit. But yeah. uh, those things are, are so far removed from what matters now. What matters now is which team shows up ready to play right. and answers the bell and plays better. 
if Villanova hits 10 to 15 shots again from the outside, they're probably going to win. You know, so that's a huge thing to watch along with Jenkins and Ellis. Those are two big, big matchups. So is the matchup with Landon Lucas and Daniel, say it. Ochefu. There he is. Yeah, <laughs> the big guy. I kind of forgot we'll it. We'll call him the big guy. <laughs> yeah, we'll call him the big guy. Big matchup there. Yeah. He had his way with the Miami forwards the other night. They right. dumped the ball down to him, and he did the old man in the driveway <laughs> move. Just yep. old back school, him back down, him down. <laughs> throw it in. back, him, And it looks so easy. I don't think Landon Lucas gives up that kind of ground. No, and, and KU wouldn't be so passive in their approach to defending that. Totally. Uh, that, that would start with Lucas. He would defend it better, but also if... Jeff does yeah. get into the paint. There would be help there quicker. They would adjust. Miami didn't really make that adjustment. Unbelievable. Yeah, it really was amazing to watch him just do whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. um, but it should be an awesome game, a great matchup, and, and, and just the perfect thing. If you get by this team, either team, if you're able to get by the other team, you absolutely deserve to be in the Final Four and headed yeah, to Houston. Sure. So we will find out who it is. Who are you going to pick? I'm going to stick with KU. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be... A tight game. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Yeah. Um, I think the difference is going to be Villanova's might have a little bit more of a struggle in scoring inside sure. against KU. Um, I think KU will score inside like it usually does. Harry Ellis is a big part of that, obviously. Right. We saw Lucas put up some points yeah. the other night. I think he's capable. Of, True post moves. Right. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's capable of producing inside again offensively. I think. Just Villanova's guards and their 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 big guys who are able to get inside. I think they're going to meet more resistance from KU's interior defense than you'll see on the other end. I think it's a tight game. KU wins. I've got KU as well. I see a lot of people picking this to be a one-point game in Going terms out. of the stats. Uh, the almighty guru Ken Palm has it a one-point <laughs> game. A couple other places I've seen that as well, and I think it could be that. I mean, yeah. I really I agree with you, but I, I will go with Kansas. I think Kansas's defense, as good as West or uh, Villanova, I've done that twice today. <laughs> as good as Villanova is defensively as well, I think Kansas just has another level, uh, and, and their style when teams aren't used to it bothers teams a lot more than than other teams bother Kansas because Kansas has seen everything this year. They really have. Yeah. So we've got Kansas like you in a tight game, cutting down the nets here and heading to Houston. It should be a lot of fun to see what happens right here at the KFC Yum Center. Number one, Kansas. Number two, Villanova. We will be here, of course, before, during, and after for all your coverage right here on KUSports.com. So thanks for checking out this episode of KU Sports Extra on the road. For my man Benton, I'm going to go follow him to dinner now. <laughs> I'm Matt Tate.